defense, and he does an outstanding job of instructing these guys in the white helmets where to be and where to go. Loss of 14 on the play. The quick pass. Oklahoma State read it perfectly. Nothing doing, even a loss of a yard, and again, it was Gillum on the stop. <laughs> You know, before we were talking about deception. Now, watch what happens here. Oklahoma State is going to show blitz. And what happens is these three guys are going to run here, here, and here. And Knowles right there comes over, knocks a receiver, and steps right in front of the pass. That's deception by call, but a great job by Terrell Knowles of seeing the ball. Rob Ryan played zone when he faked man-to-man -man on that, that particular play. On third and 25, Oklahoma, Josh Heupel's pass overthrown, intended for Damian Mackey. Mackey had a step on the defensive back. Heupel couldn't get it to him. So after the big completion, Oklahoma will be forced to kick it away. Heupel looks a little confused because of all the disguise and the different coverages being thrown at him. And Bobby Stoops knows something about that because Bobby Stoops made his reputation as a defensive wizard at Kansas State in Florida. Ferguson, first punt, 54, 55 yards, averaged just over 42 on the season. Oklahoma does an excellent job on punt coverage. This is a high kick, fair catch is being called at the 15 yard line. And that is where Oklahoma State will take over. Now we have golf, we have football, and we have boxing. How about Sunday night fights? On Sunday, December 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports Net, IBF middleweight champ Bernard Hopkins will defend his title. The challenger and number one ranked contender, Antoine Equilas, who's 22-2-1. All his wins have come by the knockout. So join us for Sunday night fights, December 12th, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on Fox Sports Net. We've got a couple of heavyweights battling it out today here in Norman, just trading swings and trading punches. And right now, Oklahoma State with the football. The most balanced line we have seen for the Cowboys, and they keep it on the ground. No place to go. Now, this Oklahoma defense at times has really been able to shine, and at times they've looked like they're still trying to adapt to the system. They were a very good defensive team last year. This year, they've had to kind of learn what Mike Stoops and Brent Venables were trying to teach. And you're going to see Roy Williams, number 38, come off the corner on the left of your screen. That is a strong safety blitz against the two tight end formation. Good call by Mike Stoops and Bobby Stoops. Now, they're not a very deep defensive team. They basically have 11 players, and they go with them the whole game. The flick comes from the right side, and Roy Williams drops Tony Lindsay for the loss. It, Second you know, sack of the game for the Sooners. It was the exact same blitz that time by Oklahoma. Oklahoma's trying to get more aggressive. Now, Tony Lindsay doesn't do a great job on the play fake, but quite honestly, he had no chance. When you're play faking and 38 comes off the backside of you, you never see it. Great job by Williams, but Lindsay had no chance. And you see Mike Stoop is fired up, and he wants a timeout there, and he gets it. I would say when you describe Mike Stoops, you should say intense. I'd say so. I think, I, think they, I think they heard him call timeout from up in the booth. <laughs> we'll take a timeout also with 9.58 to play in the half. When we return, we'll send it down to Kevin Frazier and Kellen Winslow on the field here in Norman. Artie, got to ask you, does Hamilton still have a chance in the Heisman race? No, they've already engraved Ron Dane's name in the trophy. And I hate saying that because it makes me eat pie because I know Kellen Winslow hyped Ron Dane all year, but he deserves the trophy. Nathan Simmons on the right side, but it won't be enough for a first down, and the Cowboys will be forced to kick it away. 9.40 to play here in the second. Both teams making some mistakes. Both teams making some big plays. You know, and it looks like both teams started out being wide open, and both teams have gotten a little bit more conservative as this game has gone on. Elder's last kick was 60-plus yards. A left footer almost gets it blocked. Jackson looking up into the sun at the 40. Gets one block. Tripped up right at the 43-yard line. 41 yards on the kick. 
Five on the return, and the Sooners will have it at about their own 45-yard line. That was very close to a block, and yesterday the Oklahoma coaches felt that they might be able to get one this afternoon. That was a great job of covering by uh, Jack Golden, but you're going to see right here, Oklahoma's coming off the corner, and I'll tell you what happened on that, though. I really thought that Elders took his time. He read the laces, so to speak, and he read the name on the football. Hey, you got to be a little bit quicker with that. That almost got blocked that time, and it would have been the fault of the punter being a little bit slow. Sooners, two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Daniels now switches sides, goes in motion. They get it out to the flat. Jarrell Jackson looking for some running room, not much doing. Jaquay Thomas from the defensive end. Spapa Jr. out of Houston, Texas, who really has picked up the slack on that defensive line for the Cowboys. Both Thomas and Kevin Williams on that defensive end spot for the Cowboys done an excellent job this year for Ryan's defense. And you know, you look at Jackson here, he's a speed player, and a guy like Thomas can turn around and run him down. That's two excellent athletes competing at a high level. I think Thomas is an excellent, excellent pass rusher. Second down and eight. Again, Latrell switching positions with Reggie Skinner. They got to hurry. Try on the right side, looking for one block. They didn't get it. But still getting some running room with Skinner, the senior out of Claremore, Oklahoma, run out of bounds by the true freshman, Chris Massey, out of Spyro, Oklahoma. Massey, one of the most celebrated recruits ever to come to the Cowboys. In fact, it was a great recruiting class last year for Bob Simmons, but this was the gem. And he is a parade All-American. He was a high school quarterback that they listed in their press guide as just an athlete. They wanted to play him either running back or wide receiver or DB. He will be an All-American as a strong safety here at Oklahoma State. One yard for the first down. Skinner butts his head down, and I'm not sure he got it. Needed, needed to get to the 45-yard line. A lot of white 201 pounds, didn't see a whole lot of daylight. One of the negatives of throwing the football so much, you lose your power game inside. I think Oklahoma can run outside well, but it's harder to run inside because your offensive linemen don't do it on a regular basis. Well, the officials are talking it over. Making sure they got the right spot. There's Coach Simmons on the left, Ryan on the right. He's very proud of his defense. They're going to measure. It'll be interesting to see if they do not make it, what Bobby Stoops elects to do, either punt or go for it. They only need a couple of inches. Now you have that big right side with Stocker McDougal at right tackle at 6'6", 363, Bubba Bircham, 6'2", 271, and Matt O'Neill, the big center. Well, it's either going to be a quarterback sneak or, like yeah, you yeah. said, a handoff be behind number 78, that massive right tackle. See if it's a quick snap by Hyper. OSU, everybody on the line of scrimmage trying to draw, draw them off sides. Changes the play. Cowboys dancing around. Banging in to the right side. That'll be good enough for the first down. And, and that's where you want to run. You want to run behind the op big offensive tackle. And Rob Ryan says, hey, I told you it was coming here. Come on, guys. We practiced that thing. You're going to see Courtney Malloy, number 92, get up inside, make a great job of penetrating up the line of scrimmage. But I'll tell you, it is hard to stop a back going forward for only one yard. LOU is trailing in plays 22 to 10. It's now 27 to 20. So they're starting to even things out. With 7.40 to play in the half. Heifel, pass complete up to the 35-yard line of Darrell Jackson. And that was the velocity we have seen on the passes of Josh Heifel. And there was a lot of question whether or not he was getting a little sore this year. He proved it last week that he wasn't that sore. Had a great game against Tech and the numbers on Jackson. Well, Jackson that time ran a curl, and he showed what kind of great hands he has by coming back inside and making the sure catch. One of the things that's happening with Heifel, though, he's getting into rhythm, and he's getting used to the blitzing tempo of Oklahoma State's defense. Second down and just one. A dangerous, dangerous down if you're Oklahoma State on defense. Heifel can do so much. The blitz coming, flips it out to Daniels. Has the first down, and he is going to be run out of bounds finally by Adam Edwards. 
but it was good for the first. Little pick play that time. Adam.